Inquiring minds want to know, what's up with USA Investments? Support for this show comes from Charles Schwab. Schwab can help you achieve better financial outcomes, saving for your future, putting your kids through college, being prepared for your retirement years. Schwab has the resources and the solutions that can help you. You can learn more at schwab.com. Support for this episode also comes from USAA. Since 1922, USAA has provided award-winning insurance, banking, and investment and retirement solution support to military members and their families. They offer a complete suite of exclusive products, services, tools, and advice to their members. Learn more and join today at USAA.com. Hey, welcome to the Military Money Show, where I help the military community make, save, and invest money wisely. I'm your host, Lacey Langford, the military money expert. If you're a USAA member, you know there's been some big changes to their investments. If you're not, you've probably heard everyone talking about it. Many people want to know the down low on what happened and what the future of USAA investments looks like and how Charles Schwab is part of that future. To get all the deets, I'm doing a two-part series with Charles Schwab and USAA to get you some exclusive information about the transition. To kick off the series, I'm talking to Mary Stork, the president of the USAA Investment Services Company. She also serves as GM of Strategic Investment Relationships, overseeing the Charles Schwab and Victory Capital referral agreements and the day-to-day relationship management of each firm. We talk about what USAA investments looked like before the changes, why USAA made the decision to change how they provide investment value to their members, plus Mary shares what it looks like moving forward and what USAA members are getting out of this deal. It turns out Mary and I have way more in common than we realized. I put that to the test in game time for this episode. Here it is, my talk with Mary Stork from USAA. Hey, Mary, welcome to the show. I appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Thank you, Lacey. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited about this conversation. There's a lot of things I want to learn, and I know my listeners are curious to learn about what's going on with the changing landscape of USAA. And I am really excited because I learned that you are from North Carolina, so we have that in common. So I feel like that's a good starting place. I love it. Yes, I am a North Carolinian, an Army brat. Grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Okay. Army brought here too, but then was Air Force. So it's, it's all over the place for me. <laughs> you get a little bit of all. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I want to start off this interview talking a little bit about what USA looked like before some changes, which we're going to get into. And that's what most people are interested in hearing about. So people can compare, you know, what it used to look like. So they have a better understanding of the way it is now and the way it will be in the future. So Let's start with like an easy one. What do you do at USA? Okay. Well, you know, it's funny. It's probably not an easy one. It's changed a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, For much of my career, almost all of my career at USAA, I have led financial advisors uh, and wealth managers, delivering financial advice, investment advice, life insurance advice to the USA members. Over the last couple of years, my focus shifted from that to actually leading us through the transition that you and I are going to talk about, which is the shift in our investment business uh, and transitioning members over to Schwab, Charles Schwab and Victory Capital. And currently, my role is leading the referral model and the referral experience for USAA. And, and so that is helping members get the investment solutions they need through our strategic relationships with Victory Capital and Charles Schwab. Okay. Yes. That does sound a little bit more complicated than, more complicated than it really is. Right. <laughs> so would you say like you're kind of a hub between everything that's going on with Victory Capital, Charles Schwab, USA? Yes. I would say my role uh, in the simplest form is designing and developing and executing that member experience. So all the experiences that the members have getting through USAA over to Charles Schwab and Victory, whether they have accounts now or they have accounts in the future, is what I do right now. Okay. That makes sense. Especially when you're talking about new people coming in. Okay. So that's the hub. One question that I think is really important when people are looking at this, the whole of USAA, because if you think about it, a lot of us have been with USAA since 
being a child. Like I have been with USAA since I was 15. Most of my siblings, yes. And so we've been with USAA for a long time and things have changed. They're changing now. I'm curious, why did USAA get into investments? USA got into investments in the 1970s. Actually, in 1970, we started the investment management company, and we really did that as a benefit for members. So the the mission of USAA is to facilitate the financial security of our members and to be the provider of choice for the military community. And one thing that's said specifically in there is through the provision of highly competitive products. So we want to facilitate members' financial security, the military community, and we want to do that through the provision of highly competitive products. And so in the 1970s, we felt that part, and we still feel, a key component of financial security is investment solutions. It's difficult to reach true financial security without an investment solution or investment advice or retirement advice as part of that picture. And so we got into that business to round out what we were were serving members with in terms of solutions. The shift that we've just gone through actually is grounded in the same thought process, which is we are here and we need to be able to provide highly competitive solutions to our members. And if you look at the investment landscape and the industry around us in the investment industry, it has shifted a lot over the last couple of years. And and you could even say over the last six months, we've seen even more shifts with the sale of TD and to Schwab and just more and more consolidation that is happening within our industry. And we saw that coming. Prices were, were lowering pretty dramatically. In fact, I think most dramatic in our industry was Schwab pushing the prices down to zero trading commissions. And even before that, prices had gotten really, really low. In order to reach prices like that, you've got to have significant scale. That's the way the investment industry works. You've got to have a large, very large amount of assets under management to spread the expenses of the business over that to make them very small so that you can reduce prices to a really small or really low amount. We were finding it more and more difficult to reach that level of scale and therefore to get prices as low as competitors was getting really challenging. And so when we look at what did members need from us and what could we provide to them, we really felt like that leveraging some of the best in the industry was going to be better for our members long-term than us continuing to try to do it ourselves, but not really able to give the members as competitive products and solutions that they've needed from us and deserve. That makes sense. That led to the decision to sell the investment management company and the assets associated with that and the USA Mutual Funds to Charles Schwab and Victory Capital. We really felt like members could be much better served with more highly competitive solutions by making that decision than they could have been if we had stayed the course. When you talk about selling them off, can you explain in more detail what exactly that is? So Vic, that's the part that I think a lot of people were confused because it wasn't just one, it was two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah. what went to Victory Capital? What went to Charles Schwab? And because some people had some accounts that went to Victory Capital, some people didn't. Some people just had accounts that went to Charles Schwab. And so hearing what's going on, maybe from different people, they may not understand the whole of what happened. Sure. So there are really two pieces, I think, to the investment business at USAA. One piece are the USAA or were the USAA mutual funds and the 529 accounts that USAA managed. Our portfolio managers managed those mutual funds. And many of those mutual funds were held directly with USAA on a certain platform that we had for many, many years, going all the way back as far back as I can recall. That is what was sold to Victory Capital. So Victory Capital became the money manager for those USAA mutual funds. So whether a member owns a USAA mutual fund that now is with Victory Capital, or they own a USAA mutual fund that is now at Charles Schwab or at Edward Jones or another provider, because the USAA mutual funds are actually on multiple platforms, whether they own a mutual fund in one place or the other, those assets are still being managed now by Victory Capital and actually by some of the same USA money managers that went over with those assets. So that was one piece of the puzzle. The assets that went to Charles Schwab were brokerage accounts and wealth management accounts and managed money. And what I mean by that is within a brokerage account, think of a brokerage account like a shell. And inside of that shell, or or back when I I used to work for Edward Jones and give financial advice in Fayetteville, (laughs) The way that I would describe it is if you picture a brokerage account, it's kind of like a garage. And in that garage, you can put any type of vehicle, any type of car. So you can put a variety of mutual funds. You can put stocks. You can put bonds. You can put lots of different things in there, ETFs. And so those brokerage accounts held not only some USA mutual funds, but they held other types of mutual funds as well that members held with us. 
those assets we moved to Charles Schwab. We sold to Charles Schwab. And really, when you look at what Charles Schwab could offer, they're one of the most competitive. I don't know without all the proper backing if I could say the most, but certainly one of the most competitive in the industry for brokerage accounts. And that those were the assets that went to Charles Schwab. So it's kind of two pieces. So we do have members at both places today, and it depends on what relationship they had with USAA prior as to which which of their accounts went to either one. And it's definitely a a difficult concept to share. And usually that's shared in our digital space. And that's hard to do on .com in a FAQ type of forum. So I'm glad you asked that. Yes, especially if you didn't understand the way your investments were being managed prior. And I won't pass judgment, but some people, that was the case. They weren't really tracking their investments anyway. And so when it changed, then it got a little bit more confusing for people because if you didn't know what it looked like before, now it's totally different and, and you just don't know where you're at. So I think that that's a good explanation. What did it look like before and now what is different for members when it comes to investments? Yeah, it, it is very different uh, than it was before. So before the transitions to Schwab and Victory, members would call into USAA and get financial advice on their investments or financial advice on a variety of topics surrounding investments and retirement. And they'd get that from the advisors that I mentioned earlier that I led. So the the financial advisors employed by USAA, the wealth managers employed by USAA, and they could get that in the contact center channel. They could get that in the digital space. And that came directly from USAA. Today, all of that investment advice actually comes from Charles Schwab or Victory Capital specific to the USA mutual funds. I'll focus on Charles Schwab for a minute, primarily because they are the exclusive provider for our brokerage and our wealth management services, as well as managed money. And that's where a lot of our advice surrounded in years past. So today, when members need that advice, they come to USA.com. We do have a, an investing site set up there. If you go to USA.com forward slash investing, you can see what we still have available in terms of investment guidance, investment education, lots of robust information. And where all of those pieces of information lead us is to Schwab to get that more detailed investment advice. So you can go on USA.com, you can see our providers and what they have to offer. You can learn more about retirement planning, you can learn more about IRAs. And then from there, you'll click and you'll go over to Charles Schwab for that more in-depth investment advice and specific product advice. Uh, when it comes to advising. So that used to happen at USA and now happens with our provider Schwab on their pages. So it is a little different than it used to be for sure. What if they have problems? For example, customer service, they don't understand something. Are they coming to USAA or are they going directly to Charles Schwab or to Victory Capital? And they're doing both. So we absolutely want them to continue to come to us if they're experiencing some type of problem. We have been an advocate and will continue to be an advocate for their experience at both Victory and Schwab. And so we've had members that that do both. Um, if they have something that they're confused about, or um, especially with the transitions that have just happened, you mentioned earlier, I, I want to understand where my money went and how do I access it? We have members that are reaching out to both us and Schwab or us and Victory. And we are playing that intermediary role and helping members resolve their issues um, and make sure that they feel 100% comfortable with what has changed and what's happened. So we have members that are absolutely reaching out to both of us uh, to resolve their problems. What does that look like, for example, if you are with USA, you've had insurance or banking with USA, and now you've decided you want to get an IRA? Would they be going through USAA or would they go straight to Victory Capital or would they go to straight to Charles Schwab? How does that work when they're setting things up? Or a new person that's never even used USAA, let's say a new service member that's coming in, sets up a USAA banking account for their direct deposit. How does that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So we absolutely believe that our members need investment solutions. They need to plan for retirement and they need IRAs to do that. And so we are reaching out proactively and letting members know about the new investing experience at USAA and encouraging them to come to that page that I mentioned earlier, our investing page on USA.com, come to that page and learn more about what their options are and how to begin that planning process. And so we do want them to come to USAA, learn more about what an IRA is, learn about their options. We are still here to provide advice on those types of topics surrounding financial security. 
And then when it, when they're ready to make that step and to move forward in their investing journey, we'll refer them over to, to Schwab for that need. So we, absolutely, we do want them still to come to us. That's why we've created, as part of that experience, a very robust site with a lot of good information to help our members understand how to take that first step in their, their financial security journey. Anybody driving or on the treadmill right now, I will be sure to put that link in the show notes so you don't have to jump off right now <laughs> and write it down. <laughs> yes, definitely I will put that because it sounds like a hub for people to understand I think everybody has a different learning style too. So we're talking about it right now, but that's another way to really get into more details because we're not going to be able to probably get into every single thing about this transition in this current show. So I think that's a, a great resource for people. Yeah. And for a lot of our members, it really is about the basics. So, you know, we've got investing principles on our site that you can go and check out and really learn more about the basics around investing, the basics around IRAs. Charles Schwab, again, they've got wealth management services, so they can go into even more depth on more complex wealth management types of topics for those that are further along in their investing journey. So there is, there's a, a wealth, pun not intended, a uh, wealth of information there on that site. Okay, that's good to know. I have a question because I think when this happened, it happened in the midst of all this COVID stuff, you know, it was just kind of a crazy time. I feel like people you know, sometimes we don't always check our emails. Sometimes we don't always open all those letters. Yeah. And some people weren't doing those things and they felt like, wait a minute, did I just get dumped by USAA? Not to use a dating analogy, but but that's how some people felt. But I think it's a great explanation that this decision with USA was made out of trying to have more options for people at a better price. Because I think if you go look at Charles Schwab, like it will be crystal clear to you that it's a huge opportunity for people. It is. It is. I actually had the opportunity to work for Charles Schwab in my career. I'm actually what they call it USA. They call me a boomerang. So I worked at USA for eight years. I left. I went to Charles Schwab uh, for a year and I led one of their wealth management offers for a year. And then I came back to USAA to lead the USAA financial planning and advice team. So I've actually had the, the firsthand experience of experiencing the Charles Schwab culture, the Charles Schwab solutions, how decisions are made. It's very robust and frankly, quite similar to USAA in many ways. It's very mission focused. It's very client centric. I've been in senior executive meetings at Schwab where the question that was asked of the executives proposing a certain change to their business was, if you can't tell me how this benefits the client, I don't want to hear the proposal. It has to start with, tell me the benefit for the client and then we'll move forward. And it really, it's the same at USAA. I've been in meetings where they say, if you can't tell me how this benefits the mission and our members, then you know we're not going to talk about it. So the cultures are very similar. The, the focus on competitive solutions is very similar. And I do believe that once our members get to know Schwab, they will see that firsthand. And, and we're hearing that actually come through member feedback as they're getting used to the new relationship. Yes, I will say that I had to change over some of my stuff went to Schwab and family members stuff went to Schwab and some family members that don't really use a computer and they were excited that they could go in person and get help if they needed it. So that was one thing. And I felt it was really easy. Like I just had to go through some steps, but I like that you brought up, and this is something I've been privy to in discussions with USAA and Charles Schwab is that some of the members from USAA left USAA and are now working at these other companies, correct? And so that culture is still there. I think a lot of people, and I actually, I will say I was guilty of that. I'm like, what do you know about a military person's struggle? Like, and that was my fear is that, you, you know, you're going into hands that maybe haven't been involved in what a, the military life is like. And that was one of the benefits of calling USA is that, hey, you understand, like somebody's getting ready to deploy, somebody's getting ready to get promoted, somebody's getting divorced in a military lifestyle. Which is very different in a lot of ways. Yes. And so that's one fact. So I'm glad you brought it up because I felt better when I heard that. It was like, oh, wait a minute. Some of these USA people have gone to the other companies. Like, and you have the boomerang. Yes. Yeah. We have had a lot of cross-pollination uh, with that. And we did have all of our wealth managers or the vast majority of them, they were all offered roles. Some were not able to take it for one reason or another, but the vast majority of our wealth managers went to Schwab. We had many other employees that went over in service and advice roles. Same thing with Victory. We had employees that went to Victory to continue serving. And I'll say too, Schwab has been very, very proactive at their desire to learn more about the military community. Um, and so we have already had a couple of different sessions with them, just educating them on 
the differences with military members and what their lives are like and the difficult or the decisions that they need to make and what does PCS mean and how does that impact a member's family and how can we help them through that time? And so Schwab has been very, um, like I said, proactive in getting that information from us, absorbing it and bringing it into their world to help serve members in a similar or even greater way than they were served with us. Yes, I like it. I th- and I think that's too, like a lot of people are just like me. We've been with USA for a very long time. And so there's this understanding. And I think a lot of people are worried, hey, wait a minute, is that understanding going to still be there and you know, not have to explain things? Because when something's very stressful, like a divorce or a deployment or a new baby, there's a lot of things you don't want to have to explain. Like, I don't want to have to explain what an LES is to you. That's very frustrating. We feel like that's very basic. Like you should understand that. <laughs> you should look that up online. So I think that that is peace of mind for people to know that that's still going to be there. And it still is there. Yes, that institutional knowledge is there. That knowledge of our members is there and went there. And like I said, there's a, a very deep interest in wanting to continue to grow that over time at Schwab as well. What will it look like now moving forward? The transition has been made. It's a done deal, I'm assuming. (laughs) And everything's kind of up and running. What will USAA be doing? I know you mentioned being the hub, I think, for people that are coming in. Is there any other things that are going to be different moving forward? Or is this kind of now set? From an investment perspective, um, it will continue to grow and evolve. And there, there are still a lot of ways that USAA serves members across the board. So we are are highly focused on ensuring that our banking and our property and casualty and our life insurance products are highly competitive and that we are absolutely focused there and making sure that those are great experiences, competitive in the industry and our members are getting the very best from those. We also have very deep knowledge and great experiences around retirement income. So that's something, especially with the shift in the military retirement plan, This is something that for more and more members is going to become even more important. And that's how do I plan for income in retirement? And so our retirement income expertise continues to grow in its depth and our ability to provide solutions to for members to create their own pensions upon retirement and knowing most of our members or most of active duty don't retire anyway, they separate. And so they are going to have this moment of planning for that retirement income. So those are still things that USA is doing directly to serve members. And then on the investing side, we're really focused right now on awareness and making sure that members know that, yes, we sold the assets and the business of investments. We sold that to Schwab and Victory, but we are absolutely still in the investment business. We are just doing it in a different way. So we want to make sure that members know that we have these relationships. We have vetted these providers and we are here to help them find the right path for them and and their investing needs so that they can reach that point of financial security, which is a different point for every member and feels different to everyone and looks different to everyone. And so how can we help members understand that we're here for them? We're here to help find the right solutions for them so that they can feel that financial security for them and their families as well. So my goal right now is to help bring awareness to those relationships and to help get more and more members within our membership base engaged in investing and planning for their tomorrow so that they can feel that. The blended retirement system did this, and I believe that this change with USAA has also done it, is that it's made a focus on investments, just like the BRS made a focus on financial planning, your retirement. And so, yes, it might have been some people surprised by it or not initial happy about change, but it actually made it so people are paying attention. That's what I like is that sometimes life gets busy and we're not focused. And I think you have to be present when it comes to your finances and this kind of like put the paper in front of people. Yeah, you have to be purposeful and you have to have a you have to have a plan. That's actually our, our number one investing principle or number one principle from an advice standpoint is make a plan review it annually, and do what you can do to stick to your plan. But having a plan is definitely first and foremost. You need to know what direction you're going and you need to map out what that plan looks like in order to be able to achieve your goals. Yes. I asked this question, but I just want to make sure that I'm clear on it because if I am already confused myself, then I think I should ask it again. Let's say I have a question about how to start a brokerage account and I call USAA. Do I actually talk to somebody at USAA or do I get straight put to Charles Schwab? Or is it kind of like USAA talks to me, sees what's what, and then directs me properly? Yes. 
So it, you, there's lots of different paths. So if you call into USAA and you say brokerage, I'm interested in brokerage, you can actually get directly to an advisor at Schwab that's ready. They're usually former USAA advisors, actually, that is ready to talk to you at Schwab about a brokerage account. So you can go directly through the USA IVR, just like you used to, where you would say brokerage and you'd get right to a rep at USAA. You just go directly to Schwab through the USAA phone system to get that. You also can get to a USAA representative that can tell you more about that Schwab relationship, and then they can transfer you over to to Schwab as well. So there's a couple different ways that you can get there, depending on what options you choose in the phone tree and, and where you are. I mean, it might be that you're already talking to somebody on the banking side, and they may transfer you to somebody on our team that can talk to you about that brokerage account and transfer you over to Schwab as well. We've tried to make it as easy as possible, knowing that members take many different routes as they engage with USAA. Sometimes it's all through the IVR, the phone system. Sometimes it's through the MSRs. Sometimes it's through digital or mobile. And so we've really tried to create multiple paths, depending on where members are, to make it as simple as possible. Yes, because I think for me, my age group, and given what I do for a living, the technical side, like, okay, well, I'll use the app. I can kind of get it all set up. But people that are much older than me that <laughs> made this transition, I could see that that was probably very confusing. And then how that was laid out. Plus, you know, if they're not going on the website and have that information, they are actually just getting the letter in the mail. Right. And so we have about 70% of our investment members that are heavy digital. So they're highly active in digital. They're using either the mobile app, the vast majority use the mobile app, but they're either using the mobile app or they're using our .com pages. And so they're very active there. But that leaves about 30% that are engaging more so in the phone uh, than they are on a website or on our mobile app. And so we did build in both of those so that we could ensure that we've got a live channel for members that call in. And we've got an app on our digital and our mobile as well for members that prefer digital. Me personally, I hate calling anywhere. And if I can't do it in mobile or digital, frankly, mobile, I, I'm annoyed with it because I, I want it to be simple and quick and fast. And if I do it at midnight, I need it to be ready right then. And, but my parents are like you're saying, um, they, they don't. My dad to this day will not even use a debit card or go to the ATM. He's never been to an ATM. Our dads sound a lot alike. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh, he's so funny. He misses the tellers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thanks, closed. He could have some great conversations with those tellers. But uh, but you know, we wanted to make sure that people like him were served as well. And so we built it for as many members as we possibly could reach. I'm sure there's always someone that our channel doesn't fit, but we certainly tried to fit the vast majority. Yes, I will say I'm starting to get a little lazy. I now, I used to, you know, if I wanted something, I'd go find it, I'd look on the website, but now I just open that app and just type it in as a question and then they just bring me the answer. Yes, I'm <laughs> telling you, I do. I use Siri a lot, although I think I slur because she doesn't understand me sometimes. It must be the Southern accent, I don't know. Yes, I actually saw a meme about that the other day that talking about, same play Fleetwood Mac and then getting it all wrong. Like, you know, not, so yes, it happens. Well, kind of wrapping it up. I know some people are thinking this still, even though we, we've had this conversation, what's in it for the USAA member in this whole transition, just to like put a pin in it, you know, driving home why it was done and, and what they're going to get out of the deal, because this was their family USAA and they feel like their, their family got a little changed around. What's in it for them? Yeah. And change is always hard. I'll just start with that. I mean, this whole year has been filled with change and here we added more, right? Change is always hard, but I will tell you there's a lot in it for them. I'll just give more reasons uh, why Schwab was the provider that we selected for our brokerage accounts and wealth management. They're open 365 days a year, seven days a week. Our investing teams, the advisors I talked about earlier and our service reps, we're only there six days a week and not 24 hours a day. So we were closed on Sundays. We were closed overnight. So we were eight to five on Saturdays and I think seven to seven during the weekdays. Schwab is 365, seven days a week, 24 hours. So you can reach somebody at Schwab all the time. So they're available. And that's important for our members. We've got members that are overseas. We've got members that work you know, a variety of hours. And if I'm on CQ and it's 3 a.m. and I have a question about something, I want to be able to call in and talk to someone. And Schwab has that. So that's another benefit we couldn't offer that they can. Zero commissions. You know, we could temporarily reduce our commissions to zero on brokerage. Schwab has that for everyone. And so that's not a special deal or a promotion. It's all the time. 
manage money expenses are low. They have their um, Schwab intelligent portfolios, which have no advisory fee. So they've got a lot of competitive solutions and lower cost solutions out there than we were able to have. They also have more robust trading platforms and tools available. They're experts in this industry, and they have been leading the charge in breaking down barriers for investing for all asset levels from starting out to multi-multi-millionaires for decades. And so I think there's a lot in it for members. And and really going to schwab.com and and looking at what they have and exploring their site is probably the best start. You can also, again, explore on the site I told you, usa.com forward slash investing, where we have a lot of the Schwab information there too. So that's a great place to explore on the USA side before you make a decision to go over. But I think there's a lot there for members. My money's at Schwab too, by the way. I have money at both Schwab and Victory through this transition. And I know I'm excited for the relationship that, that I'm building with Schwab. And, and I think members will see that as well. Yeah. I will say that I was impressed and it was super easy. And I believe the person that I talked to came from like a brother-in-law or somebody who was in the military. So they understood some of it. And I thought that that was good that not only, you know, they brought that up to make sure that I understood that they were trying <laughs> to understand our world. So I was appreciative of that. And And two, like somebody like me calling, it's like the experience isn't great. I'm probably going to let somebody know. (laughs) Absolutely. And our members do that. Our members, even compared to Schwab or when I worked for Edward Jones, our members are some of the most vocal when it comes to letting us know what goes well and what goes wrong. And they do it out of a true, genuine intent to help USA be better, right? I think feedback is truly a gift. If you care a lot about what you do, it's never fun to read it. You're like, oh, you know, that that didn't work or that's not a good experience. But what it gives us is the gift of being able to make it better. And our members give us that gift and um, we appreciate that. So we definitely expect that from members and, and know that they'll tell us if it's not going well and it gives us the chance to go and fix it. Yes. I would say too, with my dad, he was really impressed how quickly that somebody called him from a local office. And they followed up with him, I think, like three days in a row until it was all handled, the papers or whatever he needed to do. And it made it easier because I think at first, just like everybody else, we were all like, oh, is this going to be homework? Is this going to be a long, drawn out process? And, you know, I sat down like, oh, this is going to be like half my day. But no, it wasn't. (laughs) It's very short. So it was anticlimactic. But I like that. One thing I want, because I know somebody out there is probably thinking this. I just want to make sure we're getting everything crystal clear. USAA has partnerships with people. So like, let's, for example, FTD. So if you want to get flowers delivered to somebody, you can go through the USAA website or the app and get a discount and send flowers. That is not this, correct? You're not like getting a discount. It's totally separate. I just want to make sure people understand that they're not like, oh, if I'm going through Charles Schwab, I'm getting 20% off everything. That's not how it works. (laughs) Right. Yes, we don't have that. So it is not the same as FTD where you get that discount. Now, what we are doing, though, is we are working with Schwab to create a value proposition that is unique for USAA members. So I would say stay tuned and continue to watch as we continue to work through that with Schwab. As I mentioned, Schwab is very passionate about serving the USAA member community, and they are really working hard to make the experience unique for USA members and make sure that they are out there in the market and helping USA members and really engaging with USA members wherever possible. So we're working on that. So hopefully I can share more with you as we begin to work through that over the coming months. So stay tuned. We'll see. Yes. Well, I hope you'll tell us so I can announce it. Oh, don't worry. That's yeah. my goal is awareness. So <laughs> you'll know. <laughs> but I love to hear that. I'm sure everybody else does too, because not that like, you know, we're special, but we're special. And we, you know, that's great to hear that we're going to be treated special at Charles Schwab. Yeah, absolutely. Not that we're not already, but like, that's a little a bonus. Yeah. Well, and you know, one of the reasons that we didn't have that as a primary focus right away is we did feel like the value proposition of Schwab in and of itself was so much better than what we had already had in terms of the expanded hours of operations, the face-to-face off. They've got 300 plus face-to-face locations. I know that may not matter as much right now, but at some point we will be back, you know, in society uh, visiting face-to-face locations and So they had more there than what we even had to begin with. And so uh, we wanted to make sure members knew that first and foremost, as they ventured again into this new relationship. But we continue to evolve with Schwab and continue to look for ways to make that relationship even more robust for members. That's great to hear. Well, is there any last minute things that you think people should know about this whole changing landscape and, and moving forward? 
You know, I would say definitely I, I want members to understand the direction that we've chosen and, and what the benefits are for them. And I think the first place to start, I love having this conversation with you. That's a great start. But I would also encourage members to go to USA.com forward slash investing and really look at what's out there and look what's there and available from an education standpoint, as well as then from a, a provider standpoint between Schwab and Victory and just explore. I mean, the knowledge is a powerful thing. And the more you understand, I think the more powerful we all can be. So I would encourage that. And then I would just say, I truly believe financial security for, for anyone, I call it financial freedom, is, is a very important thing. It brings so much more comfort in many different aspects of our lives and being able to prepare adequately for the future. And investing plays a very critical role in that. And USA is still here for members to make sure that our members get the investing solutions that they need so that they can achieve the goals that they deserve to achieve. And so we want to be here for them. I look forward to hearing members' feedback as they go through this journey with us and, and begin to go through this experience. I'm looking forward to hearing how that goes. Yes, well, wonderful. I think this is going to clear up a lot of stuff for everybody. And I'll be sure to let you know if I have more questions, we can get them answered for everybody. Please do. I want to ask you a couple of quick random questions I ask every guest. And the first one is, what is one resource or tool that you use in life or work that makes it easier? Is this relating to investing or are you talking about in general? Anything. It could be anything. That's why they're random. <laughs> a resource or tool that makes life easier or You know, better. some people say they're phones. I love to use Airtable. Yeah. I, you know, I think the one thing that has really, and I didn't realize how much I valued it until COVID, are my, my earbuds, my AirPod. I have AirPod Pros. Yes. And oh my gosh, sitting in front of a Zoom all day gets exhausting. So I'll put my AirPod Pros in and I'll go walk around outside while I'm on meetings because I, I just can't sit still all day. And I have worn the things out. So those would probably be my number one right now. That is a really good one that nobody has ever mentioned before. And that hits home for me because I feel like I need more headphones with um, our boys are still home for school. And I feel like every day I'm like, where's my headset? They steal it. Yes. It's I'm always looking for a headset. I have a nine and 11 year old and I swear they eat them. Like, I don't know where they go. They just randomly disappear. So I never, I have one charger and it's green and I like I hoard it with my life because I don't want the kids to steal it. It's funny you say that because I have two boys and you know, my husband and some things get stolen from me. And so I just started to make it so they won't steal it. So I have like a hot pink cord. <laughs> <laughs> I might try that. Yes. And my they were always stealing my gloves for like going out in the snow and stuff. And so now I have like bright teal snow gloves. So nobody will take my gloves. <laughs> Brilliant. I am going to take those ideas, Lacey. <laughs> <Yes>. All right. <laughs> it's the little stuff. I have to fight back somehow. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> okay. I want to ask you, what is your favorite book right now or your favorite book of all time? Oh, gosh. So my favorite book of all time is probably, there's a book called Giver's Gain. It's a wonderful book, very quick read, easy read. Um, and it's all about the more you give, the more you gain. A lot of times people go into life looking for how they win. How do I get something out of this? How do I earn more, get more, get more sales, you know, get more friends, whatever, buy a bigger house. It's all about how do I get. And the book talks about if you shift that and you look to help others get, then you end up gaining. It's kind of the what goes around comes around type of approach, but it's a really, it's a great book. Giver's Game. I will be sure to put links to that. That does sound like a good book. I'm all about laying down goodwill. I think it goes, it's the long-term strategy. Yes. I'm a big believer in karma. So if you give goodness to the world, goodness comes to you. That's a good recommendation. All right. Now it's time for my favorite part of the podcast, which is game time. And today, since we both are from or have been in North Carolina, I want to play, Do You Remember North Carolina? Totally made up that name by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give you four questions about North Carolina. And I want to, and this is going to be hard because they're not multiple choice. Okay. I'll see if you can answer it. All right. This is going to test my North Carolinian here. I've been in Texas now for 16 years. So <laughs> I think you might be able to remember some of these. Okay. What is the name of the North Carolina University that's on the beach? Oh, UNCW. Yes. That's where I graduated from. I'm NC State. Go Wolfpack. I know. <laughs> yes. That my sister's graduated from Chapel Hill, but my brother-in-law is from state. And so this constant in our family. Oh, it's nonstop, I'm sure. And you're just like, I've got the best view. So you all just battle <laughs> so it out. <laughs> yes. I try to stay out of it. <laughs> 
All right. The second question is, where did the Wright brothers first take flight in North Carolina? Kitty Hawk. Yes. I was going to take two answers because I said that too. And my dad apparently just read a book on the Wright brothers. And technically they took flight at Kill Devil Hills, which was like a few miles south or somewhere from that. But the telegram station was in Kitty Hawk. In Kitty Hawk. So that's where the telegram. So fun fact. I learned something new there. I love it. Yes. All right. Number three. What famous donut chain started in North Carolina? Krispy Kreme. Yes, you're three for three. (laughs) Okay. Which North Carolina university is the oldest public university in the United States? Oh, no, I don't know. Now you've got me. It was founded in 1789. The charter started. The oldest public university, 1789. You know it. I know you know it. I don't know. I have a couple of thoughts running through my head, but I'm not sure. So I went to Fayetteville State University for my undergraduate, North Carolina State for my graduate. I don't think Fayetteville State's that old, though. It was the first African-American teaching school, and it's a historically Black university, great school, but I, it's not that old. It's not ECU, is it? No, but you know who did go to EZU was Sandra Bullock. Fun fact there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you say uncle? I uncle. I say uncle. It's Chapel Hill. Really? Yes. Oh, I should have known that. It's right there. I didn't know that either. I, I was researching. I thought, look up some fun facts. So yes, I thought that was interesting that I was going to tell you that when I was on active duty, I started going to Fayetteville Tech. So I did two years at Fayetteville Tech before I transferred to the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. So I did six months at Fayetteville Tech and then I went to FSU. Yes. So, well, I really appreciate you playing the game and being on the show. Can you tell everybody listening where they can learn more about you and USA? Absolutely. Well, I, I'm Mary Stork. I'm on LinkedIn. I don't know that there's many other Mary Storks. So feel free to find me. I'm on LinkedIn and then USA.com and specifically USA.com forward slash investing. Thank you so much, Mary. I will be sure to put all the links to that in the show notes for everybody. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lacey. I enjoyed this. Thanks to Mary Stork for coming on the show to talk about all the changes to USAA investments. Thank you to Charles Schwab and USAA for providing support for this episode. To learn more about Charles Schwab and USAA and how they can help you reach your financial goals, visit schwab.com and usaa.com today. You can head over to lacylangford.com to get all the show notes and resources. Next week on the Military Money Show, we will be doing part two of the changing landscape of USAA investments with Danielle Munoz, who is Vice President of Wealth Management at Charles Schwab. I appreciate you listening, and I will talk to you next week.